Right at the end of my shop days back in 2003, I started creating jackets, but I did them on a sweatshirt base. That turned into my ticket to travel the country to sewing expos and shops and guilds, teaching my techniques for creating really stylish jackets like this one on a sweatshirt base. What I figured out along the way pretty quickly was that I needed to stabilize those stretchy edges and that I did a lot of wrapping of edges. So that's what I'm going to teach you next is about wrapping edges and making them decorative. As I traveled down that path of creating jackets on a sweatshirt base, I found that I really loved to write directions. And in doing so, I did several patterns, which are still available all PD. But I also did two books. I have a nationally published book by C&T Publishing called Sweatshirt Transformations. And I also did my own book, Creative Sweatshirt Jackets, Londa's Way. In addition to those two books, I put both of my fitting methods on two separate jackets into a DVD called Creative Jacket Journey. So these products are still available and at great savings right here at my web. Here's a jacket that has one of my wrapped edges and it's a wider wrapped edge. Generally you think of an uh, edge finish where you sew the right sides together and then pull it to the wrong side. But I figured out pretty quickly that I wanted to do it in the opposite manner. I would sew the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the garment and then bring it to the outside of the garment at which time I would lay down a nice yarn and zigzag over it with monofilament thread. That's called couching and I have a whole other video that I did for It's So Easy TV on couching so you might want to check that out. But it makes the backside finished and it just creates a nice wrapped edge. You may be able to see from this that I did cut this silk on the bias. Anytime you're asking a fabric to go around an edge, bias is always better. Let me show you some more specifics on how you can figure out exactly how wide to cut your fabric. The first thing that you'll note on this little sample is that I have to put the hem in before I finish the front edge. That's really a cardinal rule in sewing, that horizontals are finished before verticals. And let me show you why. Do you see how this is going to finish? It's going to look all nice down here at the bottom edge. If you did it the other way, if you did all of this finishing, let's pretend the hem's not in, and then turned up the hem, do you see how that's going to look inside? It's just, and do you see how it's going to look from the center front? It's just not as nice. So just remember, you're forced on these jackets to figure out your bottom hem and actually execute the bottom hem before you do the front wrapped edge. The other thing that I came up with was coming to this field of more crafty type garment sewing and presenting in front of a lot of quilters who had never made garments, I found that my garment sewing history and, and experience and knowledge brought some extra things to the table. And that was that this stretchy area bound with a bias piece of fabric, which also stretched, needed to be stabilized. Without stabilization, it was going to stretch out once the garments started to be worn and laundered. I found this stuff from my great friend Emma Seabrook, Sew Keys. She had the brilliant idea of having lightweight fusible interfacing cut into narrow strips of many different widths. I carry those at my website. So this is straight fusible state tape. It's straight grain. It's gooey on one side and it's very fine so it's not adding any bulk. You can wrap edges either to the outside or you can wrap them to the inside. Looking at this jacket you can see that I have sewn the right side of the trim to the wrong side of the jacket and then brought it to the outside and then I've just couched some yarn down on that edge to finish it off. That's opposite of how most people go to bind things, like quilters bind quilts by sewing the bias to the outside and then pulling it to the inside and hand stitching it. I wanted the inside to look just as nice as the outside, and I wanted to put this, as I call, icing on the cake with couching anyway. So I just started to do things opposite. However, there are times when you want to sew the right side to the outside and pull it to the inside. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what I want to specifically address first is on which side of the center front do you want to put this stabilization? I figured out that you want to put it on the side of the garment where the binding ends up. 
So in this case, this binding is going to end up on the outside of the garment. Therefore, I put it on the outside of the garment to begin with. If I had put that on the inside, you might still see some of it hanging around out here on the inside of the garment, and that would look very icky. This is what I was just speaking about. You see the stabilization is hidden when the binding ends up on the outside. And this bias cut edge, you really don't even have to cover it. Bias just furs. It doesn't ravel. That's why also we cut it on the bias. However, if you want this kind of look where we're sewing the binding to the outside and bringing it around and finishing on the inside, in that case, again, I'm going to put the stabilization on the inside of the garment, which in this case is where the binding ends up. The other thing you quilters might notice is that this is not a double layer of binding. I kind of joke and say this is a garment, not a quilt. So I'm using a single layer of bias rather than a double folded strip of bias. I already have a bulky garment. This is being worn on my body, not a bed. So I want just a single layer of this binding. I actually taught all of these binding techniques down at the big Houston Quilt Festival one year in the sample thing where everybody traipses around to all different stages. The other thing here is I leave some extra at the bottom and I fold it up and then this turns in. So how do you figure out how wide you want to cut it? Well it's really quite simple. It will take you back to fourth grade when you've done some math. You figure out how much width do you want to see on the inside of the garment. So do you see in this case here's one width so let's say that that's an inch. So there's an inch once, here's an inch twice, right? So that's how much I want to see on the inside multiplied by two. So two plus, now I'm going to add three eighths of an inch just to get around this thickness. The turn of the cloth, so I'm going to add three eighths of an inch plus what I want to see on the outside plus if I want any extra, if I want to turn it in, Maybe I don't want any extra. Maybe I want to put the couching right along here. It's up to you, but you just have to realize that you've got one, two, three times the width of what you want to see on the inside, plus just a little bit to catch, plus about three-eighths of an inch to get around the front of the garment. All right? So let's look at another. Here's even wider, so it took one, two, plus some to go around, plus how wide do I want to see it on the outside? And again, it's on the bias because it's wrapping an edge. Bias is your best friend. Here's one that I finished off with what I call my fabric fur. A lot of times I would add this fabric fur as part of the icing on my cake. So there's fabric fur with yarn couch down the middle and here's just yarn couch down. You see I could leave all of this feathering bias edge and couch my yarn down in here. All kinds of options are there for you to have fun with. Here's even another one again with that couching. But you see how nice it is when you sew the binding to the wrong side and wrap it to the outside. All of those details are found in my books.